to set your own intention for today's practice. And it might be something upon reflecting after the difficult year we've had in 2020. Somewhere where you might want to go in 21. You might set an intention around something that's physical or mental. It might be simply one word. You might like to create a statement that you could take through your practice today even. For example, I am at peace. Or I am patient. Or I am strong. Something very, very simple that you can just keep coming back to if you find yourself getting distracted. So something that you can anchor your practice today. Once you've set your intention, let's just all take a deep breath in together. So when you're ready, you can take an exhale to prepare. Inhale through your nose. Pause and let it go. And you can Gently float your knees up towards the ceiling now and draw your knees in towards your chest, grabbing a hold of the tops of your knees or shins. And you can take some circles here. So keep your knees together and just start to trace your knees in one direction. It's as if you're tracing your sacrum around a dinner plate. And then take those circles in the other direction. Draw your knees back in towards your chest there for a moment. And you're just going to exhale, curl your forehead up towards your knees as high as you can. And then gently place your head back down towards the ground. When you're ready, you can either roll to your side or you'll take a hold of the backs of your knees, curl your forehead back up towards your knees and then go for a rock forward and back maybe three times or so. As many as you like. So let's gently roll it all the way back up to the top now. Cross your legs and come over onto all fours. So bring your wrists underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. And just take a few cat cows here. So simple, inhale to arch your spine, exhale to scoop and round. ready here go ahead and find your neutral just for a moment send your right leg back behind you you're going to lift it up high arch your back and then draw that right knee in towards your nose inhale to swish it out and arch exhale to scoop and round so 
Um, I think this would be uh, your tempo. So your tempo is fine. If you want to move a little quicker or slower, please feel free to do so. Just follow the rhythm of your breath. Right, on the next one here, you're going to lengthen your leg out, draw your ribs in so you come back towards a neutral spine, and then you're just going to shift your weight forward so your chest comes in between your hands, and then you'll press the floor away to come on up. So it's quite strong with the leg up. If you need to put the foot down just to counter some of that weight, that's fine. Otherwise, you're adding in your leg there. Your leg goes high as your chest goes down. So you have to push up against gravity there. It's quite strong, yes. <laughs> Lovely, nice, Angela. Great. Monique, that's looking great. So um, elbows are in, or you might like to think of the elbows pointing back behind you as you dip forward. And we're just going to go one more. Try and keep it as centered as possible. Great, and pushing back on up, knees together. Send your hips back and round through your spine. Forehead maybe doesn't touch the ground for this one, so you're working more towards curving the spine as much as you can. You might like to plug your fingertips into the ground and even creep your fingertips forward a little more. You get a nice stretch through the shoulders. Go ahead, roll forward. Send left leg back, lift it up, and we're going to take that arch of our back and then draw that knee in towards our chest. Inhaling to arch, exhaling to scoop round. So just exploring these shapes, exploring how they feel in your body. Perhaps notice where you feel a stretch happening. Does it feel good in your body? Does it feel not so good? What can you do to make the shapes look good? Perhaps you rein it in a little, or maybe you explore lengthening and reaching more. Let's make this one our last one, hold. And then ribs draw in, come back towards your neutral, so leg is more in line with your hip. And then again, we'll take those dips, so shifting your weight forward, chest in between your hands, and then you push back up. So that is an important part. We want to try and keep shifting the weight forward so we load up the arms and keep the elbows in, opposed to bringing our nose down in between our hands. That's cheating. <laughs> Good. Nice, Al. Elbows in. And uh, no, because we've got one leg lifted, we tend to you know, lean to one side a little. Can you keep it as square as possible? And remember, you have that option to pop your foot back to the ground, or even both knees back to the ground if you prefer. Starting off fairly strong there. Go a couple more for me. And last one. And then go ahead, send both your knees back together. Go back to that shell pose, so rounding the spine. A little bit different to your child's pose that you do in yoga. And then go ahead, shift your weight back forward. Tuck toes, lift up to a downward dog. We're not staying there too long. Go ahead and walk your hands in towards your feet. Bend your knees, relax your head. Go for a couple of yeses and a couple of noes. You might even like to grab a hold of your elbows and do this so that your arms are really genuinely hanging out of the shoulder sockets. Go ahead, release your hands back down. Just an easy spinal roll back to standing. So stacking your spine one at a time to rise up to the top. Hands can go out nice and wide. Inhale, lift them up. Stay standing and just draw your elbows down by your side. Exhale. So you're squeezing your elbows in towards your ribs. Yeah. And then inhale, lift it up. You got it, Laura. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale to lift up. As you're doing this, try and notice the muscles down the sides of your shoulders engaging. So your lateral muscles, the serratus anterior muscles. And you're just doing one more like that. 
and then we'll lift our hands back on up. You can bring your palms together, bend your knees and arch your back. As you come down halfway, we pause, bring your hands to your knees, elbows are wide. Good, let's go ahead, scoop round through the spine. Inhale, pull your breastbone forward and arch. Exhale, scoop round. Inhale, arch. If you like, you can do as I am. I'm kind of stretching my legs a little as I round and then sinking back into it. So it's like a little bob up and down. Great, and then next time we arch, we'll hold it there and then melt your chest back to your thighs. Relax and hang over your thighs. Walk your hands back out. We're arriving in a plank. So wrists underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your, sorry, legs are nice and long. <laughs> if you want, knees can come underneath your hips or go to a half plank, so your choice. So otherwise, hips are high. Can we tuck our tailbone today? So tucking tailbone, glutes might engage a little more there. Belly button, draw it in towards your spine and feel as though you're really pushing the floor away from you. Keep your shoulder blades pulling apart. Long neck and then slowly here, we're all gonna drop our knees back down to the ground, untuck our toes, knees together, go back to your shell pose. Shift your weight back forward, round. Hands underneath shoulders, tuck your toes and then shift back up to your downward dog. Pausing there. In your downward dog, feet are hip distance apart, hands are shoulder distance apart. You can take a pedal out through your legs if you like, bending one knee at a time. Particularly if you're feeling a bit tight, you need to loosen up into the shape. And then whenever you're ready, we're all going to move into stillness. So just starting to wind that down. Heels might not be touching the ground, that's fine. Your knees may be a little bit bent, so you can melt your chest closer to your thighs. Or your legs might be straight, whatever feels best for you today. Just taking a couple more deep breaths, perhaps even coming back to the intention you set. Ready, inhale, float your right leg up to a three-legged dog. You're gonna take it into external rotation. So you can take that leg up as high as you can, but keep your shoulders square. So it's more the thigh bone rolling in the hip socket than you really trying to open up the hips. And then as you're ready here, we'll take that right knee in and you're going to take your Tuck your toe, drop your knee down towards the ground so that it's underneath your hip. Right elbow comes down and then you'll float your left leg up into sim similar external rotation. So you're getting that leg up nice and high. Ribs are in. And we're gonna repeat that a few times now. So we bring that foot back to the ground, hand back to the ground, shoot your right leg back to your three-legged dog. Bring it in, knee lands down, roughly underneath your hip, right elbow lands down, go ahead and float left leg up. Beautiful, take it back down. Come back and extend it up. So we go shift forward, land it down, elbow down, float it up, take it back, hand to the ground, shoot it back. And then seeing if you can just make this Flow, so you're connecting all of the movements. It never ends. Yeah, nice work. And maybe even imagining that you're moving through a resisting substance. So imagine you're surrounded or engulfed in honey and you're pushing through that thick golden honey. I hope I'm not making you hungry. <laughs> okay, 
Let's go hold up on the next one now. We stay. So once again, try and pull the front of your ribs in towards the back of your ribs so you're staying more neutral through your lower back. So yes, you're in your external rotation and your left hip bone is lifted a little. Can you lift your leg up a little higher from there? Feel your glutes engage there. Now tap your toe down to the ground and we lift it back up. Ribs stay in. So a little bit different to what we were doing at the start of the class when we were in our four-point kneel and we were arching our back and drawing it in. Now you're keeping your lower back really stable so you can get your backside to do the majority of the work. Very nice. It's looking good. Can we please do four more? Last three. Last two. And on one, you're going to hold it up at the top there. Really reach that left leg away from you. Go again a little bit higher, everyone. Yes, that's your starting point. Now we go tiny little lifts up and up, up and up. Beautiful. Four, three, two, one. Hold. Breathe there for three, two, oh, one. Land your foot down. We come back up to our three-legged dog. Right leg shoots back high towards the ceiling. And then right knee is going to step, or right foot is going to step in between your hands. Drop your left knee to the ground. Untuck your toe. Inhale, rise on up. So we're coming into our low lunge. You can sink your hips forward, but perhaps tuck your tailbone down a little. So you're trying to come again out of that back bend. Feel that stretch through the front of your hip. And then getting a little bit deeper through the front of our hip, we're catching a hold of our left wrist. Palm up, go for your side bend to your right. We take it back up through center, hands frame the right foot. Go ahead, tuck your back toe under. Step your right foot back to your plank. We'll go for a little flow. If you like for this first one, we can drop our knees to the ground, untuck our toes. Elbows point back behind us as we bring our chest in between our hands. Inhale to your baby cobra. Maybe the hands hover. Exhale to melt it down. Push back up through your half plank. Hips lead this action. And then gently shift back to your downward dog. Find your shape. Connect back to your breath. Maybe your intention as well. Inhale, float left leg up to three-legged dog. So once again, feel that spiral in your hip socket. So your shoulders haven't changed. And your hips are not twisted too much there. It's more coming within the hip socket. Yeah, nice work. As you're ready, you'll bring your left knee in and you're gonna land it down roughly underneath your hip bone, left elbow to the ground, and then we go ahead and float the right leg up. Same thing, feel that spiral in the hip socket and get those glutes to activate there as you lift your leg high. Land that foot down, hand down, shift back. Left leg to three-legged dog. We draw it in, land the left elbow down, float the right leg up. So being mindful that we're still trying to stay connected to our center the whole way through this. So we're controlling the shapes. They're not passive. We're thinking really long spine. And maybe if that helped you before, come back to that imaginary movement through honey. You're creating a little bit more resistance, feeling as though you're pushing your leg up, drawing it in slowly, resisting that right leg up, drawing it down slowly. We don't stop moving. There's no actual stop. Constant flow. And beautiful work, everyone. Next time you land down, we'll hold. So left elbow's on the ground, the right leg is up. 
go ahead and feel as though you're spiraling your thigh bone in the hip socket. Lift that leg up as high as you can and then slowly tap the leg down. We go lift up, reach and tap down. So here, I don't mind that your hip is slightly open, but you want to feel as though the front of your nibs are knitting in towards one another. So feel that stability through your lower back. Center is engaged and you're floating that leg right back behind you. Right back behind you. Good, nice work. Four to go. Three. Two. And on one, we'll hold it up at the top. Stay there. So again, let's search for our max range of motion. So go ahead and lift that leg up as high as you can and feel those glutes really engaged. You haven't let go of your back though. We got tiny little lifts here for eight, seven, six, five. Think of it as an up and hold, up and hold. Last two and one. Slowly land that foot down, hand back to the mat, step it back up. Left leg to three-legged duck. Left knee draws in towards your nose. Shift your weight forward. Step the foot down. Drop your right knee to the ground. Low lunge. Rise on up. So again, you can shift your weight forward here. But reminder, just to maybe tuck your tailbone so you feel like you're really lengthening your back. Grab a hold of right wrist. And then take your side bend to the left. Deepening that stretch through your hip flexors. Taking it back through center, hands frame left foot, tuck your back toe under, step back to your plank. Your choice, you could stay long legs or drop your knees back to the ground. We go exhale all the way down. Chest leads the action and land it down. Coming up a little bit higher to your cobra, anchor your pubic bone down, inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, melt it down. You could keep your knees on the ground or tuck your toes and stretch your legs. I'm keeping my knees on the ground. <laughs> Let's go and push up through a plank. Hips lead, long spine. All right, take it back, downward dog. Hands walk to feet. Soften your knees, roll up through your spine. Arms are heavy. As you arrive at the top, take an inhale, reach your hands up towards the ceiling. Palms together, arch your back, take it all the way down. Hands find your thighs, sorry, so halfway down, that's it. Go ahead, scoop around. Inhale, arch, two more times. Exhale, scoop. Inhale, arch, one more time. As you arch your back, you'll melt your chest to your thighs, hang back over your legs, walk it back out. Find your downward dog. Just straight away into a downward dog. Inhale, float right leg up to your three-legged dog. Working our external rotation today. So leg up high. Exhale, knee to nose. Shift your weight forward. Step the foot down in between your hands. Rise on up to your high lunge. Inhale. As you arrive at the top, once again, you can soften through back knee, tuck your tailbone. So we are again trying to create that length through spine. Now shift your weight forward a little more. Grab a hold of your left wrist. We go for our side bend as far as you can over to the side. So you're literally pulling, pulling that arm over. Yeah, that's it. Nice, Laura. Take it back through center, release your hands back to the ceiling. We're gonna bend the back knee, drop our hands down. The knee's gonna land all the way to the ground. Hands come to the inside of your right foot. And then you're gonna twizzle your left toe to the side of the mat. Right foot's gonna land in front of your knee and you take a seat down. Push your left leg back behind you a little. So you've arrived in this zigzag position. Your right shin is in line with the side of your mat. Yeah, we're going to take our arms off to the side. I think right elbow down to the ground will feel nice for everyone. And your left hand can go quite wide. 
Yeah, so we're kind of facing the top of our mat with this. I want this really big rotation through your spine. But keep your shin where it was, Al. It was great where it was, your shin. So right shin stays in line with the side of your mat. Your body is trying to turn to the front of your mat. Go ahead and lift the back knee up and lower it down. That's it, Al. Lift it up and lower it down. Now it's confusing. So when I come on up, I look like I'm facing the side of my mat. Yeah, and then you're going to rotate your spine to face the front. And then you lift. You got it. Nice. So this is pretzel. Some of you are familiar with this one. Monique, I know you love it. <laughs> So what I want you to focus on is keeping this back leg, the front of your hip, stays in extension. So it stays straight, long. There's no fold at the front of your hip. You're keeping it really pushing back. So as you're lifting back behind you, you'll be feeling the side of your glutes work and even back and around to the back of your glutes. So it's a glute exercise, not a hip flexor exercise. Now, we're pushing into our hands to keep our chest a little more buoyant. We're not collapsed to the ground. <laughs> so it's still activating through our center. Now, the first time I did this exercise, I actually couldn't even lift my leg, although we can make it harder. I think we started from here when I first tried it. So we're starting a little lower down so that we can lift the leg and get a sensation of that. If you want to make it a little stronger, you can lift your chest up and try and work from there. So we've turned this into more extension through your spine, but feel as though your ribs are still drawing in. There's a lot to this one. <laughs> so it's a fantastic exercise though. Get those glutes really strong. Now your leg might be just lifting off a millimeter and that's fine. You might be getting it off maybe an inch though, and that's awesome. It just depends on how you're structured, how your hips are structured. Okay, on the next one here, we're gonna hold it up. Can you go for eight little pulses? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold. Tricky now, everybody come up. And you're gonna swing your leg around so it's hovering off the ground, and you sit down on both sit bones and then you swing it back around to that same starting point. Yeah, so if you want, your arm's coming right arm in front, left arm out to the side, a little ballet-esque, and then take it down and around. And up, you got it, nice, and swing it down. Maybe lean into it so the chest comes lower now. Good, and lean into it. Maybe the leg goes up higher, and around. So think like a ballet attitude. Up, so squeeze into that backside. Laura, you're going, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you making me do? <laughs> go with it, just go one more. We go all the way around, hold, lengthen that leg out, pop your right elbow back to the ground for this one, lengthen your right leg out. So legs are pointing to the back of your mat, your body's still trying to spiral round to the front of your mat. Go ahead, lift and lower, lift and lower. So it's the top leg lifting. You're pushing away from the floor and almost feel like you're trying to drag your breastbone forward. So pull your arms in towards you as you pull your breastbone forward. So staying connected to your center, that leg's moving up as high as it can, all the way up. Get your glutes still working. Four more of these, last three. Two, and on one we hold it up, we go eight little pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold, lower it down. Bend your knees and keep your knees pushing back so your hips stay kind of longer. Hands, let's keep it on the ground just to start us off. Lift your hips and lower it down. Lift your hips and lower it down. If you're feeling fine, you can lift your left hand Place it on your hip, or even better, up towards the ceiling. <laughs> Good. You got four more of these. Squeeze the inner thighs together. And then holding it up at the top, 
See if you can keep your hips lifted. Left hand reaches skyward. We go thread the needle, twist your spine so your chest rotates down to the ground. Inhale, lift that hand back up. Left hand reaches as far as you can to the side. Inhale, lift it up. So make this massive, as big as you can. We do one more just like that. Hips still up. And then you take it out, hips still up if it's okay for you. Left leg goes long. We go lift and lower. Lift and lower. So a bit of a booty, booty burn. A bit, a lot. <laughs> we'll go four more. Three, two. On one we hold. Are your hips still lifted? If they are, can you lift them up a little bit higher? Yes. <laughs> lift them up, lift that left leg up a little higher, and we go eight little lifts. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. Slowly come all the way down. Roll over onto your tummies. Both forearms are on the ground. Right leg is bent, your left leg is straight. Find that sensation of dragging your elbows in towards you to pull your breastbone forward again. Anchor your pubic bone down, navel to spine. We're going to kick that right heel into our bottom three times. One, two, three, extend it out. Left foot. One, two, three, extend it out. So just alternating your leg. You've got those three little pulses in. And this exercise, you have to be really conscious that you're engaging properly. It's not passive. Elbows really press down. You drag them in to pull your breastbone forward, and you try and lift your belly button away from the mat. So you feel that how that activates everything a little more? It's supporting your spine, or the core is supporting your spine. Your shoulders are working really nicely, and it's really fantastic strength and mobilizing. It might not feel like too much, but you're mobilizing in extension through your hips, so your hip flexors are getting this really nice eccentric work while your hamstrings are engaging. Okay, last couple here. One more to the right and then one more to the left. And then you'll take your chest down to the ground, hands underneath your shoulders. Your choice to push up through your full plank, so maybe toes are tucked and your legs are straight, or your knees will stay on the ground, and you'll lift up, hips lead. So you lift up straight spine, awesome. Tuck your toes, lift up, downward duck. Downward duck. So just take a moment there to breathe. Going back to this almost rest position. Not quite rest position because we're still engaging, thinking about our center, pushing down through the earth. When you're ready, left leg will float to three-legged dog. Think of that being externally rotated through that left hip socket. Exhale, left knee to nose. Shift your weight forward. Step the foot down in between your hands. And then soften through the back knee to rise on up. Nice and buoyant. Beautiful. So we come to the top. Lengthen tailbone down to the ground. Right knee stays a little soft. And then you'll catch a hold of your right wrist. Palm up. Take it over towards the left. A nice deep side bend there. And then gently come back through center. We're taking the hands down, dropping the back knee to the ground, setting up for our pretzel. So hands to the inside of your foot, and then you'll just twizzle your right toe to the side of the mat. Left foot's going to land in front of your knee so that your shin now is in line with the side of your mat. Your back knee is back behind you. And then you rotate your chest to look back to the top of your mat. Hands to the ground, left elbow down to the ground is quite nice for this one. So we go ahead and start to lift that right leg up and then lower it down. Lift it up and lower it down. It's probably not a bad view for you just to see this from the back, so I'll just stay here for the moment. So as you're lifting here, you're still thinking ribs in pushing down into the floor to keep it a bit buoyant. And then this is our glute exercise. So the side of your glutes will be working. 
And because we're already quite close to our max range of motion there, um, for some people you might already feel like your glutes are engaged before you even move. <laughs> so try and really surrender to the mat when you come down, just let it go completely, and then see if you can lift up and get that kind of feeling of contracting and then release. Contract and then let it go, soften off. Okay, we'll just go four more here. Last three. Two, very nice, and one. Come and hold. We're going to take little tiny lifts here. You can lift up a little higher. We go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, swing the right leg forward and around. You can lift your torso up, and then you'll swing it back and around. Maybe drop your chest down. So like a little seesaw action. As you swing the leg forward and around, left arm could curl in front, your right arm could go long, and then you'll take it back out and drop it down. Let it swing and use that momentum of movement just to help you connect everything so that it flows. It's almost like a little twist to the right, twist to the left. Maybe that right leg goes up a little higher so you keep working through the back glutes there. So lift it up. <laughs> Last one, looking good. Uh, nice, hold it down. Extend the right leg long, left elbow back down. Left leg shoots out underneath the right, so legs are in line with your hips. And we go ahead and lift the right leg and then lower it down. We lift it up and lower it down. Once again, thinking really active, push the floor away from you so you're staying up and out of your left shoulder socket. That's it. And we want to go control the lift, whoop, control the landing down. So we're working both phases of muscle contractions. Concentric as you lift, shortening the muscles. Eccentric as you lower, lengthening the muscles. Both ways are very good for your body to work. Okay, on the next one, we're going to hold it up and we're going to go for a little pulses for eight, seven, six. Up and hold, up and hold. Last four, three, two, and one. You bend your knees, yep, and then lift your hips up and then lower them down. Lift the hips up and lower them down. You could keep your right fingertips on the ground, otherwise on your hip or even up towards the ceiling. I might turn around so I can see you all a bit better. Looking good. Find your left glutes, the bottom glutes working to help you lift. Great. On the next one, I'm gonna hold it up. Remember here, we're pushing quite firmly down through that left arm. We go ahead and take R, thread the needles. So you're reaching underneath and you're turning your body to really reach for it. Reach the hand back up towards the ceiling. Huge range of motion, let's go. Scoop, you can lift your hips up higher as you scoop under. Yes, nice work. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, scoop round. Inhale, up. One more time. Then we hold up, last little bit, right leg's long, you lift and you lower it. Think again, control the lift, control the landing, so there's not much momentum of movement there, you're making it a little harder for your leg. <laughs> That's it, control. Gorgeous, nice work, Monique. You got it. On the next one, let's hold it up. We go for eight little pulses. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, and one. Lower everything down. Once again, you're going to turn round onto your belly. I'm just turning myself round to back where I was. So, yep, roll straight onto your belly. This one here, what we're going to do is lie all the way down. Let's keep the legs long to start. You take your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers, and then push your hands away from you. Let's take the right ear to the ground. Yep. 
So push your hands away from you, lift your chest, look forward, arms lift as well. And then as you come down, bend your elbows, place your elbows to the ground. You're gonna kick your heels into your bottom three times. One, two, three. Send your legs long, lift your chest up, look back to the center, then your right ear is going to come to the ground, bend your elbows, elbows touch the ground, heels in three times. Reach away, inhale, lift, and then as we take the heels in, we go, <laughs> inhale, lift, exhale, <laughs> inhale, lift, Exhale. <laughs> Last one here, turning back towards the right. Great, and coming all the way back down, hands back underneath your shoulders. Your choice to push up through your plank. We lift all the way up, take it back to your downward dog. When you're ready, walk your hands back to your feet. Soften through your knees. Inhale, roll it up the spine. Hands back to the top. As you come down this time, palms together. You'll arch your back and yes, you'll come all the way down. Walk it back out to your downward dog. Inhale, float right leg to three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee in towards nose. Step your foot down in between your hands. Rise up, high lunge on your inhale. As you come to the top here, this time we're going to come for a twist or go for a twist towards your right. Keep your pelvis stable. Turning the spine opposed to the hips. Inhale, both hands come back up towards the ceiling. And you're going to take your fingertips down towards the ground, but just let them hover or just touch the ground. So leaning into that right foot, start to shift your weight forward. And now you're going to float your left leg up. Hold. So just fingertips touching. You're trying to keep your spine as long as you can. Shoulders roll back down away from your ears. And now you're going to lift up to stand. Keep your back straight and tap your back toe down. So your chest goes with the movement. Right knee will always stay a little bit bent. Now we're going to try and tap the fingers to the ground. Seesaw forward. So left leg goes high as your chest drops down. Lift back up. Control the movement. Yes, good balance. So taking it down. The muscle group that we're working the most is our hamstring, hamstrings muscles. So you want to feel that really coming through the back of your leg. Your glutes are also working quite hard there on the right leg to stabilize your hips. So hips are staying roughly square. And those back of leg muscles should be working very hard. Nice sec. If it doesn't feel good for you to come all the way down to the ground, you don't have to. You can make it half. That's also fine, yeah? Otherwise, you're trying to push that max range of motion. I understand if your hamstrings are feeling very tight, then that's going to be really hard to tap the ground and keep your back straight. So just move where it feels good and appropriate for your body where you can keep good form through your back. Okay, we're going to do one more. <laughs> As you come down, you're going to bring your fingertips down and you can stabilize your body a bit better by pressing down into the ground. You can keep your right knee as bent as you like. You lift your left leg up high, tap the ground. You go big lift and tap. Lift. And tap on the next one. We lift up, we hold, we go for eight pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Toe heel down at the back. So your left toe is turning towards the side of your mat. Reach your left arm long, windmill up to your warrior two. So you might need to wriggle that out wider like me. 
Yeah, bend into that right knee. Make sure it's tracking in line with your middle toes. Long arms, look over your right arm. Flip that right palm. Let's go ahead and take a side bend. Paint the ceiling, take it back. As we come up, we're going to straighten through the right leg. Lean forward, so towards that right hand. And then maybe take your hand to your shin, left hand up to the ceiling, or if you like, you could bring your hand in front of your leg and bring your fingertips down to the ground. That's not for everyone. It might not feel good for your back. So you can stay up a little higher if you prefer. If your hand is in front of your shin, push your hand into your leg to lever open your left rib cage. Great. Go ahead, bend back into your right knee, come back through your warrior two. Windmill down so both hands frame that right foot. Your right leg's gonna shoot up to three-legged dog. Think external rotation. And your choice, you could land your right foot back to the ground. Otherwise, you're going to come with me. Shift your weight forward. We're moving through a vinyasa with your right leg staying high. As you shift your weight forward, you're bending through your elbows. Bring your chest down, foot down. Let's land our belly down to the ground and just come into an easy cobra. And then take it down. We're going to do that a couple more times, so don't worry if you didn't quite get it that first time. Let's take it back up, plank, into downward dog. Inhale, left leg floats to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Shift your weight forward, step the foot down. Inhale to your high lunge. Take your time. Going for our closed twist. Exhale to the left. Inhale, hands reach back up. So once again, we're going to bring our fingertips down towards the ground, just touching to help you balance. Float the right leg up. And then as you come up, you're landing your toes down, lifting your chest up. Think core. The so core supports the spine. We keep the spine straight. So you're hinging just at the hip. Everything else doesn't actually change. And then you're lifting back up. <laughs> I'm not so good at balancing on this side. <laughs> good. And once again, if you prefer, you don't have to come all the way down. You can come down part of the way and then work from there. You're still going to be working the same muscles. If you like and you're having fun with it, <laughs> go all the way down, trying to keep stable through the body. And think about the muscles that are working. So we're biasing the hamstring group and your glutes. So feel that, especially when you come up, feel those muscles work to help lift the leg up. You got it, Monique. Keep it going. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice point. <laughs> and breaks whenever you need are also fine. <laughs> Remembering to breathe. As soon as we hold our breath and stuff like this, it actually becomes much harder to balance because you start to tense muscles that don't need to be working. So we keep it really fluid. Let's hold it down on the next one, everyone. I can see you're all dying. <laughs> Come on, hold it down. We stay. Plug your fingertips into the ground so it's a bit more stable. Lift the leg up high. Tap it all the way down. We've got three more of those. Tap it all the way down. Last two, and then on the last one, we hold it up for our eight pulses, straight into it. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Toe, heel down. Right hand reaches forward to take you to warrior two. So might need to shuffle out your feet a bit wider. Totally fine. Set your feet up nicely. Flip the top palm and paint the ceiling. Moving into Trikonasana, so straighten your left leg, lean forward, then bring your hand down towards your shin, or maybe down towards the ground if it feels okay for you. Trikonasana, Trikonasana is an interesting shape. 
We want to be quite careful with how we're working on that left knee out in front. So if you can just soften the back of your knee, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So you're not locking it out and you're making the muscles work harder to support that joint. Great. If your hand's on the ground, use it as leverage to open up your chest a little bit more. Right ribs back in space. And then pull yourself back up, bending into your right knee, uh, left knee, pardon me, as you do so. And then windmill back down to the ground. Three-legged dog. Your choice, you could put your foot back to the ground and just move through a normal flow. Otherwise, keep your left leg high. We shift our weight forward. You can start to bend into your elbow straight away, making sure they're pointing back behind you. Chest lands down in between your hands. And then you can place the foot down to the ground. Just lift up to an easy cobra. Coming back. We're pushing back up through plank. Meeting in downward dog. Please feel free to take a child's pose if you need it. Inhale straight away. Right leg floats to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nurse. Stand high. Lunge. Inhale. Exhale, twist to your right. Inhale, back to center. We bring the fingertips down to the ground. Just one lift up. Bring your chest up, land your toe down. We come back down. Bring your fingertips all the way to the ground. Toe heel down, warrior two. Rise it up. Straight away to your exalted warrior. Then trikonasana, straightening the right leg, leaning it forward, hand to shin or down towards the earth. Peel open the left ribs. Inhale, pull through that left hand, bend back into your right knee. Windmill down, hands frame the right foot. Right foot to three-legged dog. Choose to leave it up or land it down. We're trying for our three-legged flow to upward-facing dog now. So exhale, shift your weight forward. Chest goes between your hands. As you land your foot down, lift and push up through your hands, hips stay off the ground, both feet pressing down. Take it back on your exhale. Inhale, left leg to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Coming up on your inhale to high lunge. Exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, back through center. Fingertips begin to find the floor. Shift your weight to left foot. Float the right leg up. We lift the chest once. Drop the toe down. Shift back forward, landing your fingertips into the ground. Stabilize, kick that leg up high. Toe heel down. Windmill it open. Exalt your warrior. Straighten the left leg. Shift your weight forward. Trikonasana. Bending back into left knee to find warrior two before you windmill down to frame that left foot. Left foot lifts to the ceiling. Three-legged dog. Land the foot down or come with me. We shift our weight forward. Keep your leg up as high as you can as you do that. Good. Chest comes in between your hands. Land the foot down. Push through both of your feet, both of your hands. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. That looks great, Angela. Nice, Al. Go ahead and take it back. Walk your hands to your feet. Soften through your knees. Roll up through your spine. Inhale, hands to the ceiling. Exhale, melt it down, arch your back. All the way down. We're walking it down to the ground. Knees on the ground. Cross your legs, take a seat back. Well done. Come on down onto your backs. I'm going to do a little bit of floor work before we finish. 
So as you come down onto your back, you're going to pick your knees up into tabletop position. Anchor your sacrum heavy. Hands behind your head. Exhale, lift your chest. Inhale, lower down. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower down. So just really easy flexion. If you prefer to do this with your feet on the ground, that's fine. Yeah. Al, you're okay doing this still. Yep. Yeah. Looking good. Yep. Yeah. If it doesn't feel good for your back, you don't have to um, do your crunches. You could do your table toe, toe taps instead. But if you're feeling good, we're going to keep adding on with these movements. So, heavy sacrum on the ground, you're still in your neutral spine. Feel as though you're trying to slide your ribs to your hip bones. Front of your ribs slide down to your hip bones. So you're curling your chest up nice and high. Adding on now, we're going to lift our chest and hold. We send the right leg to the ceiling, the left leg long away from us. We see the legs change and change. You could put your head back to the ground, otherwise keep it curled up, and it's a big movement through your legs. Max range of motion. Extend it. So your bottom foot is just hovering off the ground. Yep. Yes, nice work. If you want more, <laughs> you're going to twist towards the leg that's lifted and change. <sighs> Inhale, change. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So a lot of oblique work there. Try and keep your hips stable as best you can. Great. Nice. Go four more. Last three. Last two. And last one. Ooh la la. <laughs> Take your knees in towards your chest. Relax your head down. Just a little out blast there. You have been working at the whole class though. So that's all we'll do there for today. We're going to come into just a couple of poses to stretch out. Place your feet down on the ground. Hands down by your sides. Tuck your tailbone under and roll up into a bridge. Just roll it down. These are really soft. So just to mobilize your back. Just enjoy that sensation of articulating through your lower back as you connect the vertebra into the mat one at a time and then back off the mat one at a time. You could do this a few more times if you like it, otherwise you'll come with me. We'll lift the hips up and turn this into our yogic bridge. So your hips go high, interlace your fingers underneath you. Palms perhaps pressed together for this one, and you push your hands firmly into the ground to lift your hips up high. Breathe into your belly, just watch it rise and fall. And then when you're ready, you'll roll it down, release your hands. You could do another one of those bridges if you like, otherwise, we're going to do a different back bend. Just before we do, knock your knees together and let your feet move further apart. So this is just a nice little release for your sacrum. We're going to come into our fish pose. So you might have your own version of this pose, but um, if you like, you'll come with me. You're taking your hands down to the ground and you're going to walk your hands underneath you, palms up. So you're grabbing a hold of your bottom. <laughs> so, copper feel. <laughs> Grab a hold of your bottom. And then, keeping the elbows in underneath you, you're going to bend your elbows, lift your chest, and look back behind you. You can lengthen your legs out long, feet together. If you want to... Build a little bit more heat. Feel free to float the legs up. Otherwise, just keep them down on the ground. It feels quite pleasant for most. <laughs> it might not feel pleasant. If it doesn't feel good for you, you can come down and out of it. Just make sure you're breathing. And then very gently, you'll start to take your head back down to the ground. Release your hands. Come back to your feet wide and your knees back together. 
So internal rotation. You could place one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. If this feels lovely for you, you can stay here. Otherwise, soles of your feet come back together, your knees go wide. So similar to how we started in this really open position. Close down your eyes. We'll just keep the gaze down the bridge of your nose. And come back to allowing your body to melt back into the earth. Notice how you're breathing. And perhaps just come back to that intention you may have set at the beginning of class. A little moment to reflect on it. And perhaps take it with you into your day, maybe even into your whole year. Just finish our practice off with a breath together. Exhaling to prepare. <sighs> Inhale through your nose, fill up your lungs. And then let it go, sigh it out. Gently float your knees back up towards the ceiling. Maybe in towards your chest. If you'd like to take those circles again, go ahead and take three in each direction. Circling the knees together and the other way. And then just nice and easy, rolling to your side. To make your way up to a seated position, you can keep your eyes closed today, or if you prefer, keep them open, that's fine. And just bringing your hand to heart center, into prayer. A little moment here to acknowledge the beautiful work you've done today, looking after your body, your mind, your soul. And thank you as always for practicing with me today. Namaste.